Reptile Keepers here. And folks, before I get started, just a quick few safety reminders for all of you, really anything not directly attached to your body, things like cameras, cut, and cell phones. Uh, please don't have them hanging over this exhibit or resting on the post or lipstick around. They just have a risk of falling in. With that said, accidents happen, you drop anything in here at all, just let myself know, and hopefully I can go and safely retrieve those items for you. There's about 28 reasons why you don't want to hang anything over here, though, and those 28 reasons are the 28 adult American alligators. Most are resting right here. Fast up, uh, waiting on that good sun to hit up, which they're really enjoying right now. We got some big ones out on land that you can see. I mean, scattered around some of our larger males. The way that you can see just how large and impressive these animals are, but animals like this have been around a long time. Crocodilians have been around for tens of millions of years, and 80 million years ago, one of their largest ancestors from the earth, so far that we know. That was Dinosuchus. Dinosuchus was a crocodilian that reached, on average, about 40 feet long and weighed in around 20,000 pounds. That is tripling, or sorry, quadrupling the length of that animal there. And even though it lived that long ago, don't think of it as a dinosaur, this animal is what ate the dinosaurs. Paleontologists were looking for dinosaurs and said they had dug up this massive ancient crocodilian. They gave it the name Dinosuchus. Translated out means terrible crocodile, which is a good fitting name if you've got an animal that, you know, ate dinosaurs. But even though this, you know, these animals, they maintain that ancient appearance, never mistake it for something like a lack of intelligence. These are really smart animals having what's part of the brain known as a true cerebral cortex. So with that, they can actually have thought and function in their brain, not just acting instinctively to their own environment. They learn and adapt to it. We use this to our own advantage and do some training with some of these animals for a wide variety of reasons. I'll see if I have anybody over here. If anyone in the water wants to come over, it looks like they went overhead and swam over. <laughs> Not at all. Alright, we'll try someone on land right here. Let's see who we got. Snaggletooth, you want this? Snaggletooth. There you go. Open up, open up. Oh, there you go. Oh, we both missed. Just kidding, it's not your fault. We'll leave it on me. Hey. So you can see, I'm going ahead and ask her to open up, and she just decided to stop. There you go. You, you didn't get anything in your mouth. <laughs> and we're done. Uh, but with it, anything like this, I can go ahead and you can see just how close I'm getting to these animals. And with it, if she's willing or wanting to, you're really liking that sun today, huh? That's okay. Did it the first time. <laughs> point of it is just showing how close I am getting to them. And it serves a wide variety of functions. One of them is for their veterinary care. With these animals here, they can go ahead and come on over to us. They can also come on over when our vets are here so they can get a nice clean assessment of their health. It's a lot less stressful on them to participate in their own veterinary care willingly, and it's a lot less stressful on us as their keepers. What I did just do right there, though, is not normal at all. None of, none of this is normal. Uh, you should not be able to do this with wild alligators. You should not be able to walk up to a wild alligator and have this happen. Right, Sandal Teeth? Well, that should happen anyway. You shouldn't even be able to get this close. You're, being, you're doing great. <laughs> they should have a good, healthy fear of humans. So any of these animals, like you walk up, they should be high-tailing it and trying to turn around, getting into the water, getting away from you as soon as possible. And as you see, they're not doing that. They could not care less to be right by them. This is what makes this a much more dangerous situation than when working with wild alligators. And that's why you never ever want to feed a wild alligator, because all that's going to happen is you're going to slowly but surely take away that natural fear these animals have of humans. And eventually you might have what we call in this industry, I'm just going to phrase it as a really bad day. But right now, as I mentioned, a lot of alligators right now just chilling on the banks. They are doing one key behavior they have to do. A lot of times you hear people saying like, oh, they're lazy, they're not doing anything. Like they are, this is one thing they really have to do. It's essential to their health because these animals are reptiles. Reptiles, they cannot regulate their own body temperature. They have to warm up if they, from external sources of heat. If they want to raise that body temperature, they do that with the sun. So they're going up there, lying in the sun, soaking up those rays, as well as all those UV, that UV, that's good for their health too. And their bony ridges on their back are what really help out with that. We call those osteoderms, they're little bits of bone right under that layer of skin. And they just serve as like a built-in solar panel on the backs of the alligators. The sun comes down, it's gonna warm up that back. That back gets nice and warm, all that bone gets warmed, and throughout that bone are tons of little blood vessels. So when that blood is getting warmed up, it helps keep them nice and toasty warm. However, when they are on land, you can just see, again, just the size of some of these animals. So I got some big ones around me right here. These are all females right here. 
Well, we got the examples of some nails right here. And with it, their tails are one key thing. You can see the drag marks of the sand, but these tails are about 200 pounds of muscle alone. They are a laterally compressed muscle. They can't even lift them off the ground when they are moving around. It just drags behind them. So because of that, this would be like if you had a refrigerator strapped to you and you had to drag it around everywhere you went. Then if you go ahead and look at their heads, they're also pretty big. I mean, some of those males, those heads are over 100 pounds long, just in the head. They can't even really lift it up. Um, so when you look at their legs compared to their body size, not exactly the largest legs compared to the rest of their body. So because of that, you hear a lot of common misconceptions about these animals and their speed on land. And one of them is that alligators are actually really fast on land. I don't know if you heard that before. People, for instance, might tell you that these animals can run 30 miles an hour on land. And I promise you they are not that fast for a wide variety of reasons. And the most honest one that I will share with you is I would have not have gotten in here and be doing things like this if they could run 30 miles an hour. Yeah, there you go. Hi. Can we open up again? <laughs> You're just rolling out of your mouth every time. I, I'm sorry, you didn't get it. It's it's on it's under your chin. You'll feel it when you lie down. One common thing that we hear about their food. Or not, <laughs> one thing common the other common thing we hear about their speed on land is uh, probably fairly really common here in Florida actually. People telling you all the time. So this is good to like raise your hand if you've heard it before kind of thing. How many of you have heard before the thing you're supposed to do if you're being chased by an alligator is to run in a zigzag, right, left to right over here, hands raised, Floridians in the crowd, there you go, oh, there you go, it's okay, don't do it. I don't know where it came from, the only thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna look really goofy while you're running. These animals are not as fast as man as we made out to be. So while the average human can't run one in a straight shot, don't go approach them, please, don't. This is a bad idea. Everything that slows them down on land, Speeds them up in the water. Everything, like those big powerful tails, helps them blast out at a moment's notice to grab onto whatever they want. And on those heads, you got all those teeth. They're right. 70, 80, conquer shaped teeth. <laughs> Made for piercing, puncturing. Oh, there we go. And holding down on top of prey. She bit that one in half. I'm so sorry. We're just we're missing our, you know, our vibes here. All right, don't move. There you go. There you go. We yeah, on those teeth. Again, just made it through some puncture. So they bite something on a turtle. Not, not on her side, but a big male like that could eat something like a turtle, shell and all. Crushing it down, biting down, and losing a whole bunch of teeth. They don't worry about that though, they go through a lot. About 2,000 teeth in their lifetime. So one pops out, another one comes right back in, and they have no need to ever go to the dentist. Uh, however though, above and below those teeth are tiny little black freckles in the form of what we call ISOs. It's a weird word, but it's, it's just, they're little sensory organs above and below those teeth. And what they do is they help pick up the slightest vibrations in the water. So anything that goes in and just hits the surface of the water, there you go, they know right where it is as soon as it hits. We had a lot of questions asked about these alligators. I said before these little boys, ones in our park. And the, one of our largest, he's actually hanging out. Where is he at? Oh, he's right over there with his tail draping in. That is Hunter. That is a 13-foot alligator and probably over 800 pounds. With that, um, does it make him the oldest? No, because he's the largest one that we have. It's a great question to honestly answer each and every one of you. I have no idea, and that's because we don't have his birthday. You know, the day they hatched on out of the egg, the only way you can be 100% certain. These animals are all adults, so they very well could be in their 30s, but they could also be well into their 80s. Uh, 70, 80 years is about the average lifespan they live. They live a good long time. A lot of factors determine how big they're going to get, their environment, how much food they're getting in that environment, and things like male versus female. So, males, let's see. We'll use you as an example. Averaging around 11 to 12 feet long. It's a good average size for a male. Females are going to be a little bit smaller, like Snaggletooth and my other friend here. Averaging around 7 to 9 feet in size, so a little bit smaller. Then the next questions always come. People kind of want to know. They go, okay, I get it. These are alligators, but how do I tell the difference between these and all the crocodiles that I'm looking at today? And really, there's a few, but the easiest way to tell is just to go ahead and look at their heads. So look at the alligator nearest to you, and you notice their heads don't come off to a point. It's very rounded off. Big, big wide, rounded snout. It's the easiest way to tell the difference because crocodiles have a much longer, more narrow pointed jaw, like an elongated V. Easiest way to tell the difference. And to help you out even more, there's only two species of alligators. So there's uh, these American alligators, and the other one is the Chinese alligator. And there are differences between them too, um, even though they are both alligators. First is just size. So 
the largest American alligator, sorry, Chinese alligator, probably won't even get to this size. They average around only about five feet long compared to the, again, 12 feet of an American alligator. And the other one, it's one you can't tell by looking at them, but it's just how well these animals are doing in the wild and what we call their conservation status. So with American alligators, they're actually doing quite well. It's a good representation with all these ones around me. Because at one point in time, they were on the endangered species list. We risked losing them entirely. But a lot of factors came into play. And today, we're sitting at much healthier population numbers. In Florida alone, it's probably about 1.3 million alligators just here in the state. Chinese alligators, nowhere near doing as well. Only about maybe 200 individuals remaining in these tiny little portions of their former range in southeastern China. Organizations like ourselves are working very hard to be, uh, help be part of any turnaround that we can. With that, I'd just like to have one last fact uh, for you, though. And uh, if you have any questions for me, I'll be hanging out, let's see, probably like right over there, if you have like any questions right around here somewhere. But we'll get to that last fact, and it's that these alligators, when they keep asking to open up their jaws in front of me, they have the largest blood force in the entire animal kingdom. When they want to close down or whatever they're grabbing, it's about two to 3,000 pounds of force. You get a good sense of that bad day that I'm talking about now. So let's see. All right, I don't want to close my gap too much. Snaggle tooth. You want to open up one more time? There you go. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much, folks. Thank you all so much. I hope each and every one of you does have a great rest of your day. And thanks for just coming out to the Santa Ana Casino out here farm, everybody. Can I ask you something? Yes. I never saw them. I'm doing kayaking. I never saw size like this. Uh, um, well, they're there. <laughs> they're there. They're there. Uh, I, I did very wild rivers and uh, springs. Like it's never size like that. Yeah, they're, uh, they're they're there. Not as not as common, but they are there. So they probably don't survive that long. That's my question, is, right? They do. Um, there was just these are very old animals, and the problem with their were was a lot of hunting, and when it was unregulated hunting, everybody just wanted a big alligator. So, so you see a big so, alligator, then shoot a big alligator. How are you gonna kill them if they're like dinosaurs? Uh, what, how big, the wood is? Gun. Huh? <laughs> a big gun. So you can still shoot them? Yeah, people do. Because I, I saw a bullet won't get through the back, no? It, it, it'll go through the back. It but, will? Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. I don't know why I saw the like impossible to kill. No, 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 they're, they're, they're very tough, but not, uh, they can't stop a bullet tough, but... Oh. So what are you doing with uh, babies when you have a bunch of babies you sell them? Uh, there's some go to other zoos, but some stay here, yep. Oh, yeah, okay. And you guys provide meat to the restaurant? Uh, every, for everybody here, we gotta order it, yeah. Then they get, in fact, it's, it's all, the whole thing. We get a whole rat, a whole chicken, And whole skin? Whole Skin, their skin? Oh no, 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 we don't do any of that. Oh, you don't do that? <laughs> yeah, no, we don't do any of that. Because there's I saw a... some restaurants offer gator bites. They do. Those places usually come from, there's like some places in the middle of the state, farms that do it, or from like Louisiana. Oh, um, so it's not yeah, local. You... They're not local. They might be, but generally, if, if it's at a big like restaurant, probably not. Oh, okay. <laughs> Smaller places are gonna be like maybe, but um, yeah, usually it's in the form of like an appetizer. Uh huh, yeah, like, tiny meat, bites. Like, yeah, like bites and fried balls of it. Yep. Wow, so it's not from here. No, not from here, not from here, not from here. I don't know, they, I was like, I don't know if ours would taste Thank you. You're welcome. Very interesting. How did they move? Uh, the old fashioned way. How, in fashion way? Yeah, I've, I've seen, you know, they change it up sometimes, but. Uh, Cause I mean, you, you can't get on top. Uh, generally the male gets in the female and it's, it's pretty gentle, but um, they, uh, the, the, the parts come out and they Well, I know the that, but you know, like dog, they can't do doggy style. No, it's in the water. They kind of like float on top and okay. convert hips and okay. do, a little, do a little dance together. Yeah. Dance together. Yeah, if you want Max, Max, Maximo, you can see it because there's a glass. So you get the whole show. What time of the year are they made? Getting yeah. there. We're getting there. All now. right, yeah, now? Start, yeah. Starting now. Back like in May? Yeah. May is the big part of it. And then they lay eggs like July and then June, July, and then um, the eggs hatch in like October, like October, it's a three month incubation. Oh really? So they are like made of skin or the shell? The shell, and then the, sh like, the shell, there's always like a lubricant, so when they drop it, it doesn't like break. And then the, they, you know, they make the big nest, they dig it out, put the eggs in, bury it back up, mom sits on top all mad at everything. Do you so, let them move uh, here? Yep. Okay. 
Uh, oh, they're very expensive, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's a whole team going to the next, so. So the eggs technically uh, get ready from the sun. Uh, yeah, they get they the sun. They cold bloated, right? They cannot warm them like a bird. Yep. Yeah, so they have to get warm from the sun. Um, the eggs, they usually build it up so their temperature and humidity stays pretty stable inside uh -huh. the nest. So they don't want any. They don't want a lot of uh, temperature fluctuations. They want to stay pretty stable. But they know. They know where to dig and what to do. So if I come in June, I'm gonna have a gator X here. You'll just see a mile. They're gonna be right here. Me running around a lot. No, because he's just saying that there'll be a mound. Yeah, yeah October the, babies. Doesn't the temperature the, the, uh, the warmer it will either get the Oh yeah, like, uh, so, yeah. So temperature depends on uh, like sex. Yeah. So warmer. Hold on. <laughs> Warmer males, cooler females. Yeah, yeah cooler females. Huh? And they're gonna make a nest right here. Somewhere around here, yeah. Somewhere around here and those lagoon too? Uh, in, the, in the swamp too, yeah. They, oh, wherever wow. they think's good, they just start doing this. Times like, a hundred? <laughs> do you um, do you not do the beach shows anymore? Yeah, like, like we do, it's just done at 3, so this is the last hour we're going to show today. Yeah. The park closes at 5, yeah. so yeah. Yeah, if you want to come, like the best time to come, if we open at 9, come at like... Yeah, my son's leaving in the And then over there, yeah, 3 o'clock. I did the last one at 3 o'clock. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, that's going up! 